Hi guys, my name is Dr. Rocker and today we will redraw Bane from David Finch. The one from this book, Monday Night Draw Season 1. And that's the one. And we will do this in real time and properly. But before we start, a small reminder. The book I drew, Sasquatch Vikings, is on Kickstarter only for a few more days. So please make sure to check out the link down in the description. Back up the book if necessary. If not, then please make sure that you share the link on social media and with your friends and family. That would help me out so much. Thank you. But now, let's draw. Okay, people, let's do this. We start off with, with the line between the two shoulders right there. And then I want to define the spine, which should be about here. Uh, keep in mind, I will draw this bigger than, than the original I'm drawing from. So just keep that in mind. There is a the really muscular shoulder. And I will also draw in the other side. This might even be actually a bit too big, but it's working. So let's try and keep it as near to the original as possible. Then there's the arm right there. You might have done the drawing of, of the gesture from this one, because I did this when I did some, when I did a video where I did some studies from the Monday Night Draw book season one which is a very good video. I really highly recommend you to, to do this every now and then, not just once. Really draw along with this one. Uh, we are just doing gesture drawings and you will improve a lot. I get asked so much uh, what I did to improve. Well, that's it. Draw, draw from other artists. Uh, you can see here I just Drew these here. Actually, I should, I should draw in like the whole fist first, not just do it finger by finger, so you can see it, so you can see where everything belongs properly. Actually, you don't. How do I put this? I'm drawing. I'm drawing along with. I'm drawing the hand right away. That's actually not the best thing to do. I actually should do the whole gesture first, but well, I just carried, I got just carried away. Now let's even put in the nail. Might be possible that I have to erase the whole thing because sometimes uh, you you draw and then you find out that the position isn't right. And then you have to redraw the whole hand, but still not the worst thing if you have to draw hands again because they are so hard to draw. We need to practice them anyway all the time. With me, I mean me. <laughs> I need to practice them all the time. But I guess most of you do as well. No offense. There are great artists out there on, uh, amongst my viewers. Um, but still, if I see a problem, it's very often with the hands. And I have the same problems, so. Takes one to know one, I guess. Okay, this is the spine. So we can define the whole upper body like this. He's bent over, so it's this direction. I'm drawing it right here. And what I wanted to show you is, you actually, there's a bow like this and like this, but the gesture would be here, like that. And that's what I'm drawing here. And we can, we already defined the arm, and I guess it's right enough. Tricep isn't big enough, I guess. So we can we can take this as a landmark. Out of the beast bicep, there's there's the, the this line coming from. Then I draw in the belt like I always do. And what's also very important in this one, um, the shoulder is very much in the in the main part of the body. Because very often, when you draw this, you might make this mistake. Where you draw the shoulder here, but it's in here. You know what I mean? Anyway, let's move on. I'm using a 2B pencil, by the way. A 2B pencil because I actually like a soft pencil. I'm not pushing very hard. And I hold the pen like this. I have a lot of pen control, actually. Um, 
but it's of course it's getting smudgy after a while. This is the chest muscle, by the way. And there I can now I can draw this bow right there because I already have defined where the shoulder ends. So this should be apart from the chest muscle. Um, yeah, what was I talking about? You can use a hard pencil. It's totally okay. Let me take a look at that. I can already see. I'm sorry, I'm jumping here and there with my commentary, but that's very important. Um, it looks right to me, but actually, at least once I will draw in the head, I will see that, or we will see that this line needs to get a little bit deeper. So let's do it the other way around and draw in the head first. And it's very important that this shoulder is right because this is my indicator on where the back muscles go. They are like here. And the head, as you can see, is only a little bit above this muscle. And here, here's the neck, that, that's our spine, it should be ending here. This is our spine, so about here somewhere is uh, where the neck sticks out, which, which leaves the head for here. Let's just draw in the main shape of the head real quick. Should be a fairly easy head, there's not even a face. Although we can see a lot from, from the... Uh, ah, what's it called? Man, it's too early, I'm sorry. I'm missing words. Um, the top of the head, I actually just wanted to say the top of the head. Uh, so this is the top of, this is not my eye line. My eye line would be here. This is just a help line I did. And here should be the really, really big eyes. But it works. It's funny. He does such big eyes on Bane, but it works. Something like that. So let's define this a little bit more. You can see I just made a mistake. It's very steep, the line. It needs to be like this, because he's looking angry. Ah, that's way better. Same here. Yeah, about the pencil. <laughs> I was talking about the pencil. Um, let me just check, everything is working, okay. Uh, the pencil you will use... I really did a, a good video, I dare say a good video. I don't like to to say that a video is good when it's, when it's one of mine, but yes, it, it's really... There's really some good information for you in there, uh, which pencil you should use. I think it's called what's the right pencil for you or something around this, these lines. And um, yeah, the 2B pencil, first of all, it's very soft. I can really use a very fluid movement. And what's also very important, you can see it better when filming. That's also a very important reason for me. So, like I said earlier, I think this was, wasn't low enough. Now, once I drew in the head, I think it wasn't as bad as I thought, but I still will go a little bit lower with the chest muscle. I can see it, it was here. Let's just try it out. And then we need to have a bow up there. As for shortening, this one is uh, away from us. You can see it here. This fist is way back, bigger than this one because that's the for shortening in this direction. So, and that's you see what I did there? That's my, <laughs> that's the line from my from my spine, and of course, that's not the middle of the chest. The middle of the chest needs to start here. Yeah, it goes like that. Now we're talking. Now this is looking like something. Um, and there is also the actual chest is about here, I guess. It's very hard for me to to draw exactly like somebody else because I draw so much in my own style and you just do stuff without checking enough how the other artists you want to recreate did it. So. 
Um, I can see now that this shoulder is way too big, sticking out too much. I will redraw it and we'll do it like this. That's more how it's supposed to be, I guess. I can already see that this fist might be a little bit too small, but let's go ahead and move on a little bit. There are the really cool shoulder muscles coming in here. Another one right there. And here's the forearm coming out. This one. With, with things like that, you have to be extra careful because there's this band and it's very easy to, in your mind, oversee this one. So you draw something and I keep I kept it in mind now that, that it, the forearm is actually ending here. But it's very easy, it's very easy to get confused and let the arm end here and then start there with the fist. I don't know if it happened to you, it happened to me quite sometimes. And yeah, you just have to be very aware of, of these things. You have to, to be very awake to spot everything right. And there's the thumb, quite easy thumb. Very important is the thumb muscle and it's very long as you can see. And there's the other muscle, this one right there. And you can see it's not just till the end because there we can see a little bit of this ridge right there and again now I will do it properly here is the line from the knuckles this one and now we can draw them in properly the fingers and what I will do for this video this one uh, as far as the pencils go I will do live commentary all the time and I will see how long this takes, but I guess I will, because I want to ink this and I will also film the inking process, but I guess I will just try and give you tips and tricks because once the pencils are done, well, let's see, let's see. I don't know how, how tight I will do the pencils. I need to decide that. So maybe I will not film the whole inking process but I will film as much as possible or as much as needed so you will be able to recreate this piece properly. And like I said earlier, now we have the problem that this hand is a little bit too small. I still will draw in the feet first, but then we will have to alter this one as well. There's a lot of black going on, but still we will draw in the stomach muscles as they belong first. And then we can also, we can always go in and do the black stuff as needed. There's a little, no, it's right. Okay, this is the belt. And from here on, everything is getting smaller because this area is nearest to us and the feet are a little bit more away, far away, further away from us. It's quite early for me today. <laughs> uh, wife is going out with the kids. I, I planned to do this yesterday, but life happened and I wasn't able to get like more than 20 minutes of alone time. It's crazy. Okay, and yeah, for doing these, if the kids are running around, it's it's just not working. They're too loud and I mean, they're kids. Lawrence is two, not even two and a half years old. It's hard to tell him that he needs to work now here. I need to work on my tattoos so much. So I don't want to be the one who, who tells him off all the time. See the waist a little, is a little bit too big. It still is, that's a problem. That's because I took this line for just the gesture, but this is the muscle right there. So actually, actually, there should be the gesture. And this is just the muscle coming out here. Then the whole thing works better. 
doesn't have to be a hundred percent. I don't want to be. I don't want to do a a copy like from a printer. But I want to stick good enough to the original drawing. Here you can see all the ribs. He does them a little bit different than I do. So I have to adjust and really take a close look on how he's doing them. But I guess this should look right once they are once once the strong blacks come in. There are no no ribs really. So we will not draw any as well. Okay, let's check out this arm again. Is it too small? It might be a little bit too small. But let's just define some muscles and see how bad it got. That's interesting. Look at that. The muscle from comes the muscle from the shoulder comes down so much so much over the bicep. It's crazy, but it looks so good. It's like Michael Turner would do it. He he did a thing like that where he where he drew the shoulder muscle like really very low. Very, very low. But it looks cool. The tricep right there ending up in the really big exaggerated finch muscle, which I love. I call this one the finch, finch, mus finch muscle. That's the one going there and yeah, that's the one. You would see it better if, if I would be ripped, but I can't do everything. I have to draw so much. I can't, can't get ripped. Ripped. Okay. That's about the forearm, but still, as you can see, this fist is too flat. But I could erase the whole thing, but that's not necessary. I will just go ahead and double up this one a little bit because it's not it's not too wrong, I think. But it's just too small at some parts. This finger needs to be bigger, for example. Like this, okay. And now all the other knuckles are going to get bigger, including the fingers. And then this should work. About this, I did even a video about fixing hands like that. Because very often this works pretty well. Mostly it's doubling up the lines, but check it out. It's it's called how to fix your hands or something like that. I've done so many videos and when I refer to some of those very often I don't know the actual title. Because you have to you can't just you can't just use the obvious title very often because nobody would click it. You need to have YouTube titles. I don't like that about YouTube and about having to do that, but it's just the way it is. At the end of the day, I do this for you, of course, but also for getting clicks. I want, I want this to grow. I want to reach a lot of people. I also want to get you people away from your PlayStations and on, on the drawing table. And don't get me wrong, it's, it's okay to play PlayStation every once in a while. I do it myself. I'm a big fan of Call of Duty and Call of Duty and stuff like that, especially zombies. But you have to be careful that you don't use up too much of your time because you shouldn't. You should do something more useful as well. Okay. There is almost no there are almost no muscles defined because there's very much strong blacks and this is actually a vein, I guess. But it looks cool, I will draw it in, just like that. But you know what, we will still define some muscles because I need that. It would be like that. Then this one comes here, that's also the big one. Okay, just for my, my sake. <laughs> okay, let's... Quickly 
fix the eyes a little bit. You know what? For for the head and for face features, facial features and stuff like that, I like to use a harder pencil. And I will quickly check my drawer for an H pencil. That's the one. Sorry about that, I'm not prepared. But as soon as I saw them go outside, I was like, oh my god, I need to start recording. So, <laughs> okay. There we have the face. These, right there, these little folds, they make him look thrice as angry as otherwise. There is this uh, thing in the middle. It might even be a zipper. Might be that. Yeah, I think it's a zipper. So it's like a fetish costume part. But it looks cool. And it's okay to have a fetish, I guess. Okay. Just follow me along there. Not too hard, the costume. It's always easy not to have to draw faces. I'm still experimenting around so much with faces, I don't know which, which route I should go there. But as long as I'm not happy enough, I will experiment further. And of course, very often I mess them up quite a bit for trying out some stuff and not recognizing soon enough that that might not be the best way to do things, but that's the way it is. At the end of the day, I will have learned enough to get a nice way, to get to a nice way to draw faces. The mask is going like this. And here's the rest, the rest of the black part of the mask. About that, that should work. But now I will switch to my 2B pencil again, so you can see it properly. And also, like I said earlier, I prefer it. Meanwhile, there are the collarbones. This is the middle. They are starting in the middle and go like this in this direction and there. We don't have to draw them too much here because this will be all black. Before we do the shirt we will define all the muscles and the muscles are really greatly done right there. They will be hard to draw I think but they will look awesome. So we have this line right there. It's like this muscle, that's the neck muscle starting here and going there. It's easy to overlook this one, but that's where, where they uh, come together. So very important to define the overall shape like this. And here you can see there's a line coming in here. Like that. And also another one, this one comes in right there. And now we need to do the, all these extra muscles in here. Man, I would love to move around my paper, but I want to, I don't want you to have a problem redrawing this one, so I will leave the paper as it is. There's a lot of stuff going on. This is the neck, like there. It would have been easier to draw it the same size, but then when it comes to rendering and stuff like that, I will be very glad that mine, my drawing here is bigger. And this one is was drawn bigger, of course. Um, it's uh, he drew it on an 11 by 17 inch of uh, 11 by 17 inch piece of paper. This is an 11 by 14 inch piece uh, because I figured that's enough. It's we don't need all the height. It's not supposed to be a cover or anything where you need to put something up there. 
and it says Strathmore 300 series paper because I have those in in this format which is also working exceptionally good for inking also for pencils for pencils alone I prefer the 200 series I guess it has a little bit more teeth but it's also working on this one really good and yeah, they are, they're really all great papers Strathmore is amazing paper wise I should try and get an endorsement actually I would use up all they get me I know that this line is a little bit longer than this here which means I actually should do an even bigger forearm which is crazy it's so big already but I guess I guess that's the way it's supposed to be I also like this right here I hope I'll I'll get this I'll get this right when I ink it Yeah, and guys, if you enjoy my drawings, please make sure to check out the Kickstarter. Sasquatch Vikings, it's a really cool book. I put my heart in it, which I dare say you will be able to see. It was a lot of fun, but also so much work. But I learned a lot. So if you want to learn a lot, draw pages. I said that a couple of times, I guess. But it really helps out really really big time because you have to draw first of all you have to draw a lot in a short amount of time because otherwise you won't have any progress uh, by the way this is going to be the shirt and also you have to get out of your comfort zone all the time because if you're like me and like to draw pinups which I guess you are because that's the most fun and also very very important to have a lot of fun when drawing don't just do studies every once in a while you have to do studies of course but you can do studies when drawing when drawing pinups and at least every once in a while you should have a nice drawing which makes you keep going you know what I mean But yeah, when you draw pages, which is also very rewarding, uh, you have to go out of your comfort zone all the time. You have to draw someone from behind. You have to draw someone... Wait a second, is this, this muscle? It's getting a bit confusing for me. You have to draw someone from behind. You have to draw... I don't know what this is. This is a really big muscle for, for up there, but... I will still draw it like it is, I guess. You have to, yeah. You have to draw people from behind. You have to draw people from above, from below. You have to keep it interesting. You can't just uh, use the same, the same camera angle all the time. Although it might be the one you like the most. And of course, you have to be able to, to draw a happy face, a frowny face, an angry face all kind of hands which I actually think is easier than having to draw fists all the time but anyway a lot of stuff you need to you need to do and very often it's not something you want to in my case uh, I had to draw a lot of fur with Sasquatch Vikings and uh, yeah that was that, that's not my favorite I don't like to draw fur actually but I got really fast with time. This is going like this, okay. This is coned, so I need to draw it like that. You know what I mean? This is thin and getting thicker again. Yes, and, and there we have to draw chains, which is always a bummer. Keeping me from drawing the spawn more often. <laughs> a million chains. Um, what was I talking about? Wait a second, there's an 
another thing like that. And here we start the actual chain. Those are very crackable-like chains, which are my favorite chains. There's a little bit less. Let's just do it like that. Uh, yeah, to draw chains like that, the easiest way is to to go like this, and then you put in you put in the actual chains. I mean, the other ones right there and to make it look like this this is all the shadow work the strong blacks I was talking about something I don't remember I'm sorry about that well and you can see now we need to break these up I forgot that there's nothing in between and I'll do them a little bit more my way because otherwise I'm getting too confused this is working for me, so... Yeah, so sorry for not talking more about what was I talking about. I don't know. I guess it was about the comic book and drawing pictures. Anyway, do it. Go for the talent hunt. There's still time. The top cow talent hunt. I made a video about that. You can draw seven pages. You can even look them up because they are already printed. Uh, it's, they just want to see how you would interpret, interpret them. Uh, but still, you can, you can use the reference for your advantage. Because you can see how somebody else was able to, to do it properly and they are done quite good. Still, you have to find another way how you would do them because it doesn't, wouldn't make any sense to draw it exactly like, like it was drawn before. But I, I still dare say it's even, especially if you're a beginner and you haven't drawn too many pages, it's really great to have a reference like that. And this must be something they like because otherwise the the artist who did it, I mean the the actual drawing from the actual book, which is which script they used for for the talent hunt. Um, yeah, he ha must have been f in their liking because otherwise he wouldn't have gotten the job. So great to know where you could reference from, where you can reference from. So this looks nice already. Now I will remove this one and I also want to draw in some background. I will not go nuts and do the background exactly like that. I will just draw some gravel and I will do it similar of course, but it's not necessary to get everything as it is right there. Because it's just it's just background, it's just some some gravel. I can I can do it a little bit more in my in my own handwriting. But it's it's pretty well done from David, as always, as everything. He's crazily good. He always says I mean he's he's so modest, but he's really one of the absolute best. Even when he's when he's drawing with some other artists, I always like his piece the most. Even when he's painting, to be honest. Of course, I mean, I don't know if you have seen his painting streams, but I watched all of them uh, next to drawing, but I've, I look in now, I'm looking up every now and then to see what's going on there. And because unfortunately I wouldn't have the time to just watch it without uh, without working myself although this would I, I'm sure I would be able to learn a lot more but, but still that's the way it is I won't complain because my life is pretty pretty nice I have a good job and I'm able to follow my dream right here with a YouTube channel and drawing comics 
this looks bad. I'm trying too much to recreate what David did. It's not necessary in this case. Anyway, even when he's doing his painting, painting streams, where he's having like actual painters for guests, um, they certainly know how to how to do better uh, techniques, of course. No questions asked, but I always like his version better because he does such amazing underdrawings. And that's that's the cool thing about drawing. It's the most important part, even when painting. So try to get good at drawing. Okay, there are also some uh, clouds in the background, but sorry, but we will do them later. They are not necessary now. So, oh, we forgot this one. He's plugged in here, like about that. Okay, now I will take a quick glance in the mirror and I'll be right back. And I'm back. And when I said I will do a quick glance in the mirror, of course, I didn't just check my hair. I actually didn't check my hair as well. I, I took a glance at this one, but mirrored. So from in the mirror, you can see it from far away and the other way around. Like I said, mirrors, and that's really a lot uh, makes it way easier to check for mistakes and I think the whole thing looks fine but still this hand uh, is a little bit too flat and I can also see when I when I compare it here although this is too flat the, the arm is a little bit too thin as well you can see he ends up in the thumb right there and I'm ending up here I should end up here actually so this is not exactly the same of course so it wouldn't make sense to go like this that would be a little bit too much but I will find I will try and find a middle of course I could redraw the whole thing but first of all this would take too much time which we don't have and second of all, like I said, it doesn't have to be exactly the same. That's not what we are thriving for here. So, but I guess that's working good enough. And I will still go ahead and do what I did earlier and make these a little bit longer even. Because I think this will make everything better. Okay, and you can see we, I think we are like, might be even 40 minutes or something like that. They would, would have been done with this one in 15 minutes, so. I mean, he, he wouldn't, he wouldn't draw as, he wouldn't draw as much as I would. He would have gone in with the inks way, way earlier, but I wanted to, be able to recreate this and especially so you guys would be able to to follow along and we need to do a, a proper pencil sketch first but I guess that's all we will need now what we will draw in right there are, are the, the gloves they need to be like that I forgot about those Okay, so here are the gloves, also on the other side. Let's just define them a little real quick. Now I will clean this up a little bit, but you don't have to watch that. Okay guys, now we will start with the inking process. I will start with a 0.1 fine liner from Micron. These are the same tools David uses uh, for his drawings and especially when he, when he was doing this one, he did this on YouTube on his YouTube channel on a Monday Night Draw, of course. 
and he also uses these toys. Toys, huh? <laughs> That's cool. Tools, but actually they're toys. Um, like I said, there's still that one fine liner from Micron, Fudensuke, uh, brush pen, the blue one with the hard tip, and uh, this is just a brush pen, like a real brush. But we will go come to these later. Now I will use the zero one fine liner uh, to to do the the rough outlines, and that I will sped up now because I just will trace everything we did here. So no need to uh, no need to do a lot of commentary. So I will put on some music and I will do this really quick because yeah, we can do that quite fast. Let's go. Okay, you can see we are back. I just, I just uh, followed all of the lines we we drew before, and what I what I did are the holes. I forgot to draw them before, but those are quite easy. You don't even have to do them, but if you want to recreate it as well, in this manner, then just draw in some holes. And what we didn't do are veins. There are not too many veins, although it's pain, but let's do them real quick. There's a big one right there. It should work still. I can, I can find a way through there for my through the gaps I left. And there's also a big one, the very important vein on the bicep coming out here. And of course, we only will draw the shadow of the vein later, but that's about the way it's supposed to be. Are there any else? He didn't do any here. Let's just keep it like he did and don't draw too many wings. I might draw too many wings uh, anyway in my drawing. So let's just do a drawing with a little bit less wings. And yeah, I will draw them in right away. You can see my 0.1 fine liner is quite broken, but that doesn't bother me. It's what I don't care for are where are they some some double lines. Sometimes he's making double lines when I press a little bit harder, like here. Uh, that's that's because it's broken, but I don't care. It's still a great one, and I can do a really. Let me show you on an extra piece of paper. I can do a really great variety because he's broken, very thin and very thick. Because. The lid is damaged because I use them quite a lot. And yeah, you see what I mean? That's the double line when he's spreading too much. I don't like that. But other than that, uh, broken, broken tools can be amazing to work with. I really like those. I only, only have old pens for in use at the moment. But uh, on the other hand, I still, I still am looking forward to get uh, a new Micron Zero One fine liner. Uh, I ordered some quite a while ago, but for some reason everything takes very long at the moment, but you know that for sure. Okay, oh, and there I forgot the fingernail. We can do a fingernail as well. Um, but before we will do any more details, we will go in as David does with the strong blacks now. So, which means we will use this brush pen now to do the strong blacks. So let's do some strong blacks. I paused real quick because I had to take a photo from in between. I will, as always, take a photo from every of the steps and put them on Instagram. So please make sure to follow my Instagram account there will be a ton of uh, a ton of stuff, a ton of uh, pictures you might be able to use for reference, especially with redrawings like these, because then you can find all the in-between steps. I do pictures of all the in-between steps. Of course, you can draw along here with the video, which is working out great, I guess. But if you are drawing along and still have also reference from the finished drawing 
uh, and especially for the in-between steps, that will help you a lot. And mostly, I, I know I said this a couple of times already, but mostly uh, for when when the strong blacks are done, because the strong blacks, if you if you want to reproduce a drawing like this, you have to be accurate with the strong blacks. When you do too many strong blacks and then hatch out of them, the whole drawing is just getting too dark, or just a blur. On, and on the other on the other hand, it might happen that you don't do enough strong blacks. So if you have the possibility, check out my Instagram account to get these the at least the image with the strong blacks done and then try and do that. Of course you can also do a screenshot here on the on the channel. Do a screenshot and uh, use that for reference because the strong blacks are very hard to define when recreating a drawing like that. And I'm trying to be very loose with the strong blacks because Dave is very loose with his strong blacks and he does such a great job. He always says he's ha heavy handed but at he yeah, he might be when he's penciling, I can't say that, but he's really, really fluid and uh, good when he's doing, when he's working with the brush pen. He always says he's not good with it, but he's, he's actually brilliant. Don't believe this man, <laughs> at least, at least not when he's talking about his own art. He's his worst critic, which of course is very important. I also am a harsh critic of my work. I guess it's very important to be able to grow. But as you might have recognized already, Dave is really, really good. So. Okay. Yeah, very excited about the Sesco Trikings project and uh, it will be out soon. Uh, it, it will be over soon. <laughs> out. Yeah, that's a German problem because Aus is over. Anyway, it will be over soon, so make sure to check out the link down in the description. And then I will leave you alone <laughs> with all the, the talking about the Sesco Trikings Kickstarter because when it's over, I don't have to bother you. But still, it was a lot of work and still is a lot of work, so it's very nice to make something out of that, of course. And a lot of you told me they wanted to get some of my art or wanted to see a whole book from, from me, so that's the chance. That's your chance right away. And if I have a big career, it might even be worth something sometime. <laughs> the first book, the first whole book Dr. Rocket did. Can you imagine? I possess the first book Dr. Rocket did. Before he was working for Marvel and DC. <laughs> might as well never happen, but who knows? Make sure to get the first, the first one. If it's not possible for you, then also no problem. What would help me out is if you would be able to share the link from the Kickstarter on your social media and or maybe even just send it to your friends and family. Maybe there's someone who might be interested or might be in the position to to buy something, it's not expensive, but still, you most likely will need a credit card to to be able to get that. So. Okay. One of the most exciting things about Sasquatch Vikings for me is that Andrew Dollhouse agreed to do the colors. Andrew Dollhouse is a professional colorist, and he really does a great job. 
he he was working I don't know if he is still working for spawn uh, gunslinger spawn but but he was at least working on gunslinger spawn I, I should have known this but I don't I'm sorry um, and yeah he did an amazing job right there and, but I guess if you don't do an amazing job you will not be able to get work like that, like Gunslinger Spawn, big book, Todd McFarlane, one of the biggest guys in the business. So really check it out, it will be cool, cool stuff. Okay, you can see there's a lot of uh, dark areas here because the light is coming from above and he's bent forward. So there are a lot of strong blacks right there. And you see what I just did? Don't just do a line like this, just a straight line, but wait, I can show it here. If you would do a line like this, that would not be wrong, but if you do a line like this with some bumps where you define some extra muscles, this looks way better even instantly. Oh, I forgot another of these, but I can draw them in later. So let's move on a bit. I need to be quicker about this. Not so easy to talk and draw all the time. Also, I don't, I, I thought, I said to myself, I will not move the paper around too much for this one. I will have to when I do the hatching a bit, but also not as much. Uh, but now I'm sitting here like an ass <laughs> to be able to draw properly. But I want this to be too good to be seen. To get more juice. If you press there, you can you will get more juice in the pen. If it's dry like that, you can use this dryness for some kind of shadings. But I want to stick to the original as much as possible and everything is very clean there and well defined. Now I got too much juice in my pan, but yeah, it'll wear down quite soon. There we have the, the muscle, the chest muscle, very well defined. And this one is making a big shadow still right there. See? We are getting somewhere, I guess. So now we need to make sure that we are big enough with this shadow. Let's just see. There's the shadow I just drew and it's where the head is out. The head is out, there's the shadow. I guess it's good enough. A little bit bigger maybe. Okay. Then we have to do this right there. There of course will also be a big shadow. There's a little bit of a rim light from this direction. Just a little. I guess he actually didn't do a rim light, but I guess this one was done out of habit because usually he draws rim lights. There's no rim light, no sign of a rim light from there. No second light source actually. There is one on this side, but not here. But let's just say this arm is uh, producing a light source because it's lit from this direction and producing this short rim light. So we will draw this as well. I guess that's what, what would make sense. With the, uh, with the brush pen you need to be extra careful not to go too fast because that might be a problem. First of all you have to be careful not to smudge anything, especially if the ink is like this. Uh, you will not be able to see it in the camera but it's, it's a glance, I can see a glance because it's so wet. But I will be extra careful not to smudge anything. And 
you shouldn't go too slow of course because you want to have some power in your lines and in your in your yeah in your lines and in your uh, surfaces I guess it's a little bit big but that's how it's supposed to be um, but at the same time try not to mess it up because that can happen quite easily as well comes here okay there we have some folds or something like that are oh, there is folds let's just see there are folds I would be way quicker by the way if I would do this on my own because then I would just try and think how I would uh, place the shadows but for a certain extent I want to I want to do this like Dave did which is also a great learning experience for me because he does it so well way better than I do of course and of course I have to think I, I would not be able even if I would draw this all by myself I would by far not be as fast as David is because he's a, he's a beast, he's so fast. And here's the big muscle I was talking earlier about this one. I still draw it like it is here. I think it's a little bit big, but that's just the way it is. It's Bane, he, he's a big muscular fella. And these right there, There's the shadow from the head. And here we have all these small muscles and stuff like that. I guess I will not be able to do that exactly like he did. That would be... I don't want to uh, study every small muscle here and try to get, get everything exactly the way he did. I think that's not necessary. I will try to capture the overall muscle groups and that should work and look pretty cool. So what else is new at Dr. Ox? Pretty much everything is about the Kickstarter as you might have noticed and as fun as it is I'm also glad I will be able to to think about some other stuff and do some other stuff as well. Um, I I really enjoy to post stuff on inter in on Instagram at the moment because my Instagram channel is growing quite quite a bit lately, which is nice because I think it's a really really cool platform. Instagram has has this really cool vibe for artists, I guess. I really think it works pretty nicely. You can see, actually, the light source is coming from here, but let's say it's hitting the character here. So this is a black shirt, so he's still, there could be a rim light, but he didn't, so I won't, won't do either. So this is all in black. Right there. And my little daughter is coming in and asking something. Let me just pause for a second. Okay, all taken care of. I, I hope. Let's hope it holds for a while. It would be great if I would be able to finish the strong blacks before, before I have to, have to take care of, of my kids again. Yeah, I was just talking about this one, so you can see it works brilliantly, so it's really good. There's a black, so now, you, now we can see that there is um, there is a lot of... Uh, that, that this shirt is black, so that's, that's what I wanted to say. Okay, there... this one wasn't quite right, but it doesn't matter. Okay, is there something else I've missed? would want this black right there 
let's just do it like that. Then, of course, there's... Oh, too far into the wing. I have to fix that later. There's some strong blacks for the bicep right there. And sometimes the wing makes a really big shadow right here. Pretty cool. Some strong blacks here. And like I said, I will of course do a... I will of course uh, take a picture when I'm done with this and also put it on Instagram. So you guys can use all the reference you need. This is a big muscle, so he needs a big shadow. This is the one I was talking before earlier, right? Yeah. I wanted to get this right, so let's concentrate for a second. Good enough. I'm feeling I'm getting a little bit nervous. I think time is running out. <laughs> time is running out! I feel like Meredith is sitting in the back and yelling about I want to go to bed, I'm tired, I'm up since 5 o'clock in the morning. Not the case, but the kids will be back in quite soon. But I will make time today. I said to my wife, Wife, today I will do this video I wanted to do, where I need quiet. I was helping her out a lot yesterday, so she will be, I mean, she will gladly help me out anyway, but especially since I was able to help her out with some horse stuff yesterday, she will be extra careful to give me some time, I hope. It's very demanding, it's very demanding times for us. Like a five-year-old and uh, a, an eight-year-old and a two-and-a-half-year-old devil. I love him to the death, but he's the devil. He actually is, Lawrence. He's such a sweet kid as well, but Oh my. Okay. You can see we are making quite some progress with the strong blacks. It's going fast enough, although I have to check the drawing from Dave all the time, so I'll do it like he did. But you don't have to make all the same choices. Not necessary that you do them exactly like someone else did. Even if you redraw something, you can put in as much as you want from your style. But learning wise, it's really good to stick to the original from somebody else. Because my, I smudged it there a little bit. Look at that. You can use a knitted eraser to get rid of these. Especially good working with pencils, but it's also working for inks. Yeah, like I said, learning-wise, you will learn a lot if you if you try and stick to the original as much as possible for you. Okay, you know what? I want to do the head. It's a very important part. So. There is the rim light I was talking about earlier from the second light source coming from this direction. And here we need to do the forehead like that. He made some room for some folds right there. You have to be extra careful. Because once it's black, it's black. Well, that's not true. We can always use a Posca marker to bring in some white, white but that's extra work, I don't want to do too much, and 
it's also not the nicest way for you to, to make. It's also not uh, very nice looking in the end of the day. Let's do some stuff here. We can do this one. Okay. You know what? I will also go ahead and put in some strong legs right there. This is so... Let me use this one for putting it here. So, I don't want to smudge too much. So, this is a very important shadow right there. And also here, the mask makes a shadow. You can do it like that as well, because it's supposed to be black. Okay, now to the trousers. Those are very dark. Because the body makes a big shadow, throws a big shadow on the trousers. So we will try and do those properly. Let's see. Man, I still need this one. It's not dry enough. I will make a pause recording when I'm done with the strong blacks because this whole thing needs to dry a bit better. Might be the case since this is a 300 series paper, it's a little bit uh, less toothy, so it might take longer to dry. You can see I'm, I'm not following the part patterns from Dave right there because that would be insane to try and do every fold the same, it's not necessary. Do them as you think they look good. Oh, I wanted to do this one, I guess. I will have to leave it out or get my friend the white Posca marker later, once everything is dry and do them, do it later. I guess I will. If I don't forget, which is highly likely, but still, <laughs> we'll find out. Okay, there's the area, there's the strong blacks again, from, oh, with the rim light. This makes, you might hear some of my family members in the background now, but I guess I will be able to finish at least the strong blacks now, before it's getting too crazy here. Okay. This is all just black. Even this will be quite dark once it's hatched. But for now we will leave it like that. And here you can see this one throws a shadow. A big one and also some some folds like this. Yes. This is all just black, right? Yeah. Let's just go ahead and because this is very far away from the light source. We need to have some blackness. And also, the rim light right there. And this is also a quite nice muscle. Okay. Lawrence got a cold, so he's extra annoying at the moment. I didn't draw in this muscle rightly, but I guess I can fix it good enough. This one makes a strong shadow, like till here. And there's a lot of darkness from there. Turn, turn away from the light and everything, so. This is where you need to be careful when you do this too fast with the brush pen. Take your time and make it properly. 
Again, I will not follow exactly these patterns right there. Wie bitte, Lotte? Ja, aber bitte nicht reden, weil ich du gerade aufnehme. Okay? Lotte is here. She wants to draw a lot. She wants to draw as well. So I told her yes because I'm done with the strong blacks in a second anyway. Hopefully. Uh, but Lotte, can you please close the door? Kannst du die Tür zumachen, Lotte? I'm trying to teach her English a little bit. Not working too bad. She's very bright. Must have gotten that from her mother. Hmm. Okay, here, this actually needs to be black. Just black, black, black. And we will also draw in some muscles on the leg. I didn't do with the pencils before. Which means here from the folds, you can see it right there. Here from the folds, there are some folds coming down there. And here we have those extra muscles. They look really cool. Okay. About that. That's about it, I guess. And maybe some strong blacks, a little bit here and there. This is quite bright and will be mostly done with the hatchings, I guess. There might be some strong blacks on the farm as well, and more where he. Yeah, the farm needs to throw a shadow didn't do that properly before just like that and here's a dark spot okay it's beginning to look more like the drawing we are drawing from and I will also do some strong blacks uh, right there with, with, the, with the background in this case actually foreground but nah, it's called background right even there I'll do it similar to that but not not exactly the same. I didn't draw it exactly the same. So in my case, this rock here would throw a shadow on this rock, which means it should be dark like that. And also I will do some right there. I would love to see you redraw this and do it another background, a different one, but still try to stick to the original with Bane. We could do, we could do a big collaboration. We could all draw this, all redraw this cool Bane, but all with different backgrounds or something like that. That would be fun. And then we post it all on Instagram and Find a hashtag. I need to do something like that. I need to do something with Instagram and hashtags. Drawing contest or something like that. And by the way, the drawing contest for Sasquatch Vikings is still active. So if you want to be in the book, make sure to to contribute a uh, a drawing, a fan fan art drawing of Sasquatch Vikings. There are lots of really cool characters you can choose from. Um, I've I've done kind uh, I've done quite a lot of videos with different characters, and I also did a video about the drawing contest. You don't have to, you, you just have to look for it on my channel. Um, and yeah, you still have time until the end of the Kickstarter. But you will have to be fast because it will be in a few, it will be out in a few days. So make sure, make sure to do that. 
Okay, and I guess that's about it with the strong blacks. Lotte, what are you drawing? Lotte, what are you drawing? What smiles do? A unicorn! Would it? Okay, that's cool. Lotte is drawing a unicorn. I'm done with the strong blacks. Almost, almost there. And we need to do some more folds right there. And I didn't finish this this part of the trousers. Then we take then we'll take a quick quick glance of what Lotte is doing, okay? I want to see it. Oh my, I smudged everything again. That's too bad. Let's let's use a drawing for that. That's all I can grab at the moment, okay? Almost done with these strong blacks. And then we will go to the hatching. This needs to be black. But getting foldy here already. A little bit like that. And there's also a lot of black in here. In the chains between the chains because it would be pitch black in there because they they are throwing a shadow and they're actually did you do that I guess but they actually throw a shadow right there again if you feel like it just do it, it doesn't have to be 100% like they did Lotte is drawing with a ballpoint pen, you can hear that. And these little bit of shaky kind of uh, blacks like this, they make the drawing look more alive. So don't be shy if you, if you have too much of a shaky, uh, a shaky line art there. Or it's actually the line art. It's how can I call this when it's strong blacks? I don't know. Shape art. Whatever. Strong blacks are done. Let me take a look at Lotus drawing. That's pretty cool. Look at that. A unicorn. A Pegasi. Oh. I guess this one is thinking of a birthday party because she went to a birthday party yesterday and this is a little cake. That's so cute. And there's a little girl. And that's... What's this? Is this Kaisi biting in the ass? Really? <laughs> that's, our, that's our cat biting the unicorn in the ass. That's my daughter. Okay guys, but now I will let this dry and I'll be back in a second with the hatchings. Okay people, and we are back again. I am back again. I zoomed in a little bit so you can see properly when I do hatchings. Now I will draw, oh you can see that again now. Uh, I will draw this little thing right there. There's another hole in the shirt. And you know what? It's not here on this one, but I want to draw second one next to it. I think that always looks better. Then it looks more like a hole for some reason. Okay, so for hatching you can use the, the Sombo pen or also a 01 Fineliner from Micron. In this case I will start off with my 01 Fineliner because I think this will this will be dark enough. Let's see. Because this one, that's the broken one, and I can, if I press a little bit harder, I can do such big, uh, such big lines, you know what I mean? So let's just see how it works. Let's just, I will start here. You know what? I will start off on the legs. That's always a great idea. Because with the legs, let me just see. Wait a second, my wife is calling. Okay, sorry about that. Um, let's move on. There's... Let's see how it works. Well... 
well, it's not getting thick enough, I guess, in this paper. I might even do a little bit more with the Tombow after all. So, um, these, these right there, they are definitely best to be done with a Tombow pen. And you can see, you can, you can do some strong blacks with this one very fast as well. So let's just, let's just start with these, right there. I didn't do them properly. So far, after a bad start. Okay. It will get better. Let's just see. Yeah. If you if you use quick movements, the tumble pen is working great. If you want to be sure to uh, to make them right and are not are not as comf comfortable, you can use these these smaller pens. It's easier with those because when you draw, I can show you this on this area. It's not so important. When you draw with this one and. They are getting too thick quite soon. You know what I mean? So just try out what's best for you. But for a lot of these, I will try to make quick movements. Dave is mostly using this movement. I don't like it because I'm not good with it. It's not, it's just my personal preference. I like to go from thin to thick. I'm better with this movement. And when we are hatching out of the strong blacks, we need to be extra careful not to get too dark. That happens in a chiffy, so uh, it also happens a lot to me. And it might happen here today as well, especially when I use this pen. But let's just try. Let's just try it out. The problem is, when I use this one quite fast, I don't get the best uh, dynamic. Spit on my drawing. Sorry. I don't get the best dynamic uh, in the drawing. But as you can see here, there are very small lines down there. I would go ahead and make them way too long, but I will learn something now and will just do that. Just like that. Make them narrow enough. That's a very common mistake. And now I will try again with this one, which is actually something I prefer. Goes like that. You see, I can work slower and still get a nice, uh, get, get a nice line out of it. Just like that. And those broken up lines, they look so cool. You can see that properly, I guess. Um, there needs to be some extra strong legs. I like to do that with the tumble pen. If you forgot some here and there, uh, or if you just feel like there needs to be an area that needs to be black, just go in with the tumble. It's working great. And what I also like to do when I when I do a thing like this, wait a second, when I do a thing like this, you will not be able to see this on the camera, but there are some dots which are very wet. Then I do this, and uh, they are gone. So you won't be smudging as much. There we can do some really fast lines, some small strong. I always call them strong blacks, but some small black areas, it's, I guess you don't have to call every black area a strong black area. But Anyway, he hatches a lot, uh, even with those, you, you wouldn't have to hatch these, but I think it's a nice touch if you do some small hatching lines like that. If you're insecure, by the way, the best thing would have been to start with the rocks, but I wanted to show you properly, especially on, on the 
really interesting area. Now we hatch away like a crazy person. He did some extra muscle here. Smaller lines are way easier than longer lines. And here we will hatch out in these small manners again. And now we will add some... Oh, it was here actually. Now we will add some fine lines as well. And we can cross hatch a little. I try not to do too much cross hatching because sometimes it looks too much like a grid, which I don't like. I don't like the, the look of too much of a grid in my drawings. But it happens, as you might know, you know, you might know a lot of my work it happens quite a lot to, to me that I do a grid. Now I will try and do the same hatching he did right there. Something around these lines. He did more hatching lines like here and then stops and goes way, way smaller with the lines right on. Here is always, he likes to do this, the eyes like, looks pretty neat. Okay, some hatching, some cross hatching. Okay, and now I will do as follows. I will hatch along and you don't have to see all of the hatching process because I will do the same thing over and over again now. And you have seen that, uh, you have seen how I do it. You have your own techniques on how to hatch. I will do a how to render video again because I have one on my channel. Well, a really small tutorial and a really uh, kind of big tutorial, but I have gained a lot more knowledge since I did the first one. Some line weight is also in order. So I will I need to I need to do another how to render video because the other one is out of date actually. Here you can see, I'll show you the original real quick. Here you can see I didn't do these strong blacks, but they are actually done with this one easier. Anyway, it's just like that. And then I can render in quite just like that. And we need to show the roundness of this part, these lines. And of course, we will also do some smaller hatching lines. You can see this already looks pretty cool, pretty fast. Let me try this. You see? Zero one fine liner is a great tool, great instrument. Or as I put it by accident before, a really great toy. Yeah, but like I said, I will I will hatch away now and check back with you in every now and then when I feel like I might have something to say. Yeah, talking about, you can also do stuff like that. This was a little bit, those are a little bit too thick actually. Not so nice, but that happened. That's the bummer when you, oh, I, I need to, I need to do it like this. Before I was holding it in the wrong angle. But you can see this makes a whole lot of a difference. And you can go fast at some point. You can go fast all the time. But I really want to introduce you to a slow hatching technique.
because I can see that in in quite a lot of the drawings you guys are sending me I get I get sent a lot of drawings and uh, you ask for tips and tricks and very often the main problem is that you are hatching too fast I can see it because the the hatching lines are too far apart and they are they look like they are done like this and but you can see it and it's it's possible to ruin your drawing with hatching lines like this so take your time I know how it is if you are at a on a point where you are able to hatch you already put so much effort in the drawing and you want to get further and you want to get it done I get that I get that definitely because I feel the same way but you have to be patient the hatching is such a great and important uh, process especially when you want your drawing in black and white when it's colored when you would color this one and when you color it properly this would almost be enough this wouldn't look it's not a big major difference I would still uh, I would still do a lot of hatching lines uh, when I color when, when I got my pieces colored but when there's a good colorist the hatching lines are not as important anymore as hard as this is to say for me because I love hatching lines but I actually love very often I like I like the artwork in black and white more than any, anything else mostly because I'm a I draw and there you can see what the artist did who drew this you can see it better if it's just black and white of course or even just pencils but mostly I enjoy ink drawings I guess okay but now I will leave you alone for a bit and check in in a few minutes and there's something I want to show you again already you can see I've just hatched this little bit right there quite easy the same the same thing we did there uh, down there and there is the strong black area right here this little one and he's hatching out like this so there's kind of a line right there which we will not go under like this one and you can certainly do help lines like this and from there we want to follow the form as beautifully as he did right there for a better understanding I will just also do the line weight right there real quick okay and now yeah uh, sorry I just thought I put a turn off the computer now we want to achieve the same thing he did here it's a little bit hard when you not move the paper around enough but that's look that's looking pretty cool. I didn't I didn't really get it super neat, get it done super neat. But I guess you know what I mean. It's a really nice, really nice flow. That's pretty cool. And other than that, of course, when you're hatching, try to uh, try to match the shape of the body. In this case. I guess he was a little bit working. He was working a little bit too fast. The lines are in this direction, but they need to be in this direction, I dare say. Let's just do it and find it out. Like, you know, I'm making a bow like this. Because this is the bicep, it's round like this. Let's just see how this works. And still I want to stick to this kind of way of hatching. And now, well, I could actually go ahead and go a little bit further here because, oh my, the kids are getting loud again. 
because this is the shape of the bicep right there and it's also in, rounded in this direction so I want to I'm sorry about that Lawrence is killing his sister oh my of course when I'm filming it's the worst okay I have to stop here of course, the second I hit pause, it's gone again. So I guess in a minute they will be screaming again. Sorry about that. I hope you don't do not hear that too too loud in the background. Okay, but still I wanted to show you now if we compare these. This might be the better way than to just go with straight line. Actually. A little bit in the other direction it's still a great shading but and way faster done than I did but I guess that's the better way this is rounded in the right direction but just so you know I do this all the time to round stuff in the wrong direction okay And just like that, we will finish the arm now. Oh, and since since we are talking, I will use this one to do some small hatching lines, like almost dots for the wings. You know how this works, but it's very important. And from the wings, as you have seen, we just drew the shadow. No line there. And you also don't need to follow any patterns you see on the on the original. Just go ahead and draw them in where you think they would look good. Okay, see you in a bit. Okay, you can see I've hatched this one. I did some of my own stuff right there because it just it just happened. Dave always does like a grid like this, I sometimes do this, but it's working still, you know. This is the form and this is the form from the muscle, so I followed it. Um, you can do it like this or like that and you can combine it, I, I, I think that's okay. But what's very interesting, something Dave usually doesn't do is to hatch from from up to... Lotte, please let me, let me film, okay? He's hatching in the other direction, and I will do that as well now. That's cool to see. And you can see I did a little bit, I did something a little bit different right there. I have to draw this in. There's a muscle. That one is this one. And there are some more muscles like these about that. I I don't think it's necessary to do exactly the same. That's good enough. And now I'm hatching out from here in this direction. Lotte, kannst du bitte nochmal uh, rübergehen und, und die Tür zu machen? Ich komme gleich, ja? Lotte was telling me that there's some food on the table. So time for a break. But anyway, let me just finish the, these hatching knives. Because usually Dave and also I, I actually never do this, but it works. Or almost never do this. Usually Dave is just hatching from uh, from the bottom to the top always in direction of the light source in this case he went the other way around and it still looks cool cool to see cool to see him do stuff like that as well as long as it works of course but he makes everything work so no worries there okay See you later, my friends. Okay, guys, as you can see, I hatched most of the f most of the thing already. Uh, I wanted to 
to show you how, to, how I will hatch the head. Everything there was pretty much the same I did uh, I did when we did uh, the stuff together. So not really a lot to say about that. Um, what's also important is the line weight of course. You can go ahead and do a very sketchy line weight like this. Just some lines next to each other. Um, you can use both pens for, for the line weight. It will work with both of them. If it's not supposed to be too thick, just stick to the 01 fine liner. I will do some line weight there. Uh, the lines from, from above should be thinner than the lines from below. The, the light source is coming from this direction, so I will, I will leave the lines up there a little bit thinner than these right there, than, than the one on the bottom. We will also do some very, very carefully done lines like this. Don't do, don't do too many uh, in a row and don't do them uh, too, what's the word, too continuous. Just make one line, then two lines, then different uh, spaces in between them. So it won't look boring. And here we do like David did. I can fit in some here as well. The cable is a little bit damaged here. Okay, and now I want to render the mask. Here there's also a pretty cool hole in the mask, like here. What we will do now is we will start off with the eyes, a little bit of line weight in the eyes. Uh, when you put more line weight to a certain area, uh, the, the eye of the beholder will be drawn to this area. So certainly a good thing to have a lot of lines and line weight uh, on the eyes, because the eyes are a, a very important thing on a drawing. Here you have to be careful that it doesn't look like woman's eyes because of all the uh, all the hatching lines right there. And other than that we will go quite sketchy as Dave did. I love this sketchy style. I need to I need to become more of a sketchy artist. I'm working on that and I guess it is working. But I can I can go sketchier still. Okay, there we need to define the bones from the face. There's a little bit this is a little bit more of a shadowy area. We will also do those lines they did. They look pretty neat. And here you can see I didn't draw this properly. It's supposed to be like that. In a sketchy drawing like this, you can get away with a little bit more. With a little bit more mistakes. It's not a problem. Damn, he did something quite interesting right there. I don't know. I do I do it in my own handwriting because that would take too much time. Just make this a little bit darker. This is supposed, you can do the whole thing in black, but then uh, there would be enough life in it. This way there is a lot of life in the drawing. And here we will also leave a little space to this one, because Dave did. We could also hatch out of this area right here, but I guess this way we will have more life again. And I will all all these hatching lines I will do with my zero one fine liner. You can see it's working brilliantly. And we will do a lot of cross hatching there. It looks so nice with a zero one fine liner. I love it. Pretty cool. 
pretty cool. And we want to follow the form of the head, especially here. Because there's more... Uh, there's more of the rounding to be seen. See? You see how I go there? Try to do it as well. Because it's very easy to just go straight and forget the form you are actually shading. Happened to me quite sometimes. Don't make a or better to say learn from my mistakes. That's what this channel is all about. I want you to learn from my mistakes. I did a lot of them, so. But I guess we all do. No master fell out of the sky. It's a German saying, I guess. You can also use it in English. There's also a wing, by the way. Wasn't drawn in. And here is the next area we will hatch. I want to try this out. Dave did something cool here. Where he went with lines like that. Next to these. And voila! Looking pretty neat. You always have to take a look at your drawing from a little bit further apart. Doesn't have to be the mirror all of the time, but just take a look from a little bit, from, from a bit of a bigger distance, and then you might see, like I did just here, okay, this area needs to be darker, so I put in some extra hedging lines. Some of these lines are also very good to add a little confusion, some more line weight on the head. And I will also put in a little bit here to refine the muscle a little bit more. This should also work. Dave didn't do those, but it just felt like it. So this area is a little bit darker. Okay, and I guess we are done with the main character. Maybe some lines here and there. This is a very uh, confusing drawing, so make sure uh, that you don't oversee too much stuff. Because this, this could happen quite easily. I will bring some extra darkness now into the area. Sorry. Into the area from, from the black shirt. And also, some line weight is still missing. It's easier to do the line weight first because now it might be a little bit hard to find everywhere where you should do it, all the right places where you should thicken the lines and make them more dynamic with going from thick to thin. But on the other hand, when you do it now, you are not doing too much line weight because that can happen as well. And of course, when there's an area like this, if you would have done this leg with line weight, it would be for nothing because when there are strong blacks next to it, you won't see the line weight anyway, so it would have been some extra work. I feel like there should be some hatching lines. Just a little. Okay guys, but that's it. And now we will try and hatch this area down below. Oh, I forgot something important. In the eyes there need to be a little bit of reflections. For this I will use my 003 fine liner because I want to show you this one as well. Uh, it's not necessary, you can stick to the 01, but with this one 
it's very easy to do these kind of things. I think it's like you can produce as thin lines with these, uh, also with the 0-1 fine liner. But with the 3 it's just way easier. I think this looks really cool. So it can also be a 0-0-5, but the 0-0-3 is especially cool for stuff like that. Also, check this out. And the nails. Looks, looks pretty cool. And you can also go ahead and do some small extensions of the lines like these. That's pretty nice also. Okay, and now we will hatch this thing right there. Uh, this is quite easy and you can go very wild on these on these rocks. Just use very fast movements and we can do a lot of things like these, you know, cracks. They always look pretty cool. And when you do a crack, you don't have to see the whole line, you know, just like that. You would realize this is a crack the whole way through, but it's very important to break up the line every now and then. And then we can go in and do shadings like these. I'm not looking at Dave's drawing right now, I just do as I think it fits most to, uh, to my drawing right here. And you can also do them with this one. You can also go ahead and uh, working pretty similar, especially when you do very fast, uh, very fast lines. It's not as important. You can see this one is old, but this is a nice gives gives the thing a nice shading. It's kind of gray looking because there are not as many pigments in every stroke as there used to be. Now, one, when, when you feel like uh, a Tombow pen is having too much juice, which can hop off uh, very often be the case, especially when it's a new one, uh, just leave them open for a while, even an hour if you like, won't harm the pen too much and it will dry out just a little bit. Will be easier to use to use. Yeah, now some line weight of course. And I go very sketchy with this area because the background is even supposed to be more or is not supposed but allowed to be more sketchy even. Okay, and just like that, I will now go ahead and finish this off and see you in a bit. Okay, so I guess I'm done with the rocks. Now we make some dots everywhere. Makes it look more alive even. Don't go too nuts because this drawing already has a lot of stuff going on as it is, but still, it's nice. You can go nuts on the rocks though. It looks nice. Maybe I'll even go ahead and add some splatter later on. Okay, what we will do now is some background. You can see there's uh, some some lines and it's like smoke or something like that and you can see it makes a big difference because the drawings I dare say look quite quite similar but here the background it will make a big difference you will see in a second 
And to save time, I will be daring enough to just go ahead and do this without any pencils, pencil lines first. So let's just go in and add some smoke. Some smaller lines right there. And then we just fill in some lines like these. So we have some darker areas as well, but they are not too dark since they are all done with the zero one one fineliner. And of course I will not be able to do the patterns exactly like David did, because then we would still be here tomorrow. But I will try and follow along on, like, like he did the main patterns. have to be careful with the other parts of the background and at the same time there is supposed to be quite some lines uh, down there because this needs to, to darken up if you know what I mean so let's just do that you can use a million lines make them fast but be careful to make them not too sketchy because this, this can happen quite fast we do, we do not want to mess up the drawing now we are so far in so be careful but still also be daring I know it's a bit funny to say it like that. Be careful, but don't be too careful. <laughs> but that's the way it is. Lines and lines and lines. Like Mark Silvestri would do on one of his totally amazeballs drawings. Does this look anything like anything? Does this look like something? I guess it does. This will do well on Instagram. Everything that's looking a bit like Dave's stuff is doing well, well on my Instagram page. Because you know, you guys know what's good. Finch stuff. It's so cool that David Finch is so, uh, not just so modest, but it's really cool that he shows us where he came from. That's that's so much, th there's so much importance there, all his influences. And you can see them once you study his influences. But every artist does it like that, everyone. The thing is, nowadays it's hard not to look like a Finch clone because he learned he's learning us so much he's learning us so much and yeah not to just do the same thing it's hard because he's also he's already a perfect mixture a perfect mixture of so many comic book artists It really makes it hard on us, actually. Because now you have this perfect mixture, but you don't want to be just a Finch clone, of course. I mean, it's his thing, and you don't want to do exactly the same thing all the time. I mean, on the other hand, you could try, because we all will not be able to do it as well as he did, or as he does and hopefully does for a long, long time to come. What I'm also planning here on my end, by the way, I will draw till I drop dead. And I made a lot of progress over the last couple of months. Very glad, because sometimes you stick stuck 
but at a point and then something happens and everything is going better and easier and mostly for me that's when I draw pages and I haven't drawn as many pages as I did uh, for the for this whole book so there has been some major uh, some major plus points for me okay so check out the book again sorry if you feel bothered by it I hope you don't but you it might be quite interesting for you too oh, sorry not in the picture uh, might be quite interesting for you to see my progress also to find a, my way in the style I wanted to, to draw this book in uh, you can definitely see difference from the first pages to to the later ones I think that's very interesting to see especially if you're interested in my progress and and you can really take a look at that because I drew them in the right order. I guess mostly that's what how it's done. But I can imagine that sometimes uh, an artist is drawing like page 1, 2 and then page 15, 16 and 17 because it's just more similar to page 1 and 2 or something like that. This might be the case, but in my case I drew everything in order. When I was, I, I mean, I would have done it that way anyway, but I wouldn't have had another choice because the writer Daryl, who's a phenomenal writer, you will, uh, you will like his stuff. He's doing great. Um, well, we have been working together quite quite closely. Uh, he would write, he would only give us or give me the next, I don't know, mostly just two to four pages. And then I would draw them and from there we would go on and he really was open to my suggestions, which was great because sometimes it's, it's easier to draw something this way or that way and he wasn't like when it when it was possible it wasn't set in stone so he wasn't an ass about that he was really cool which made my job a lot easier because sometimes uh, you have a different imagination than so uh, well all of the time actually you will have a different imagination than somebody else and um, this could mean that it's almost impossible for you to to draw it in a way you feel that it, that it will, will look good and that's a very important thing or not just that it will look good you also have to make sure that the reader will understand everything will be able to follow the story properly and yeah if that's not the case, the way you can draw it, you have to be able to fool around with the story a little bit. And we almost are done, people. Almost done. And I'm glad we are, because I'm getting tired and I need to fix Lotte's bike. She has a hole in the rubber of the bike. So time for me to go outside and fix that so she can ride her little bike. She's very cute. She's drawing the cutest unicorns, you've seen them. And she's only five years old and I guess that's not bad for, 
for a five year old five year old I try to teach her something all the time but at the same time I try not to overdo it because when you're so young so young you need to have a lot of fun when drawing. Of course it's necessary to be able to produce something decent otherwise you will not have any fun when when all of your drawings are looking bad but uh, you also have to be very careful not to overdo it because then she would be like yeah I know I have to do it like that but I don't want to then she would stop drawing I guess it's a fine line but she has the love for drawings then like I do and if this will will stick around for some years that's amazing because then I feel like I could really learn her a lot I had to learn everything by myself or with these amazing YouTube tutorials from all of the beloved youtubers like hopefully I am for you at least I get that all the time that you guys are learning a lot from my videos I'm learning a lot from David Finch and mostly David Finch actually but there are also some pretty cool other youtubers out there which have amazing content and will be and you will be able to learn a lot from them as well okay but I guess we will we will leave this as it is yeah looks way better with the background now I need to, to sign this one let's just say I could I could sign it right there in the rocks which is fitting to my signature. Since I'm Dr. Rocker, I always write Rocker. Let's just put Rocker in the rocks. And David Finch always does the little circles right like that. I stole that from him. Let's oh what's this? Oh my god, this is embarrassing, I, man, I did two C's and I forgot to eat, I'm so sorry guys, I am not able, you see how tired I am, I'm not even able to do my own, oh my god, well, it's time to stop, I guess. That's craziness. Okay, so here I am. Not able. Okay. You know what? I will do this later. It's not drying. I'll see you in a second. And this is it, people. David Fincher's pain, drawn by ourselves. I think it turned out pretty cool. When you compare those two, there are some differences, but I think we captured the essence of the whole drawing and made a nice one. And I even managed to get my signature right. Man, that was embarrassing. <laughs> but anyway, that's the drawing. I hope you will be able to come up with a similar one as well. But that's it for today's video. I hope you had fun watching. I hope you are redrawing this whole thing. Like I told you earlier, check out the Instagram account so you can get all the in-between steps for reference. That would help you out quite a lot, I dare say. And also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the post notification bell should it be new to my channel. But now I want you to go and watch this video because that's where I show you how you can participate in a comic book drawing contest where you will be able to get in the book where the link is down in the Kickstarter. So you still have two or three days left to submit uh, a fan art of Sasquatch Vikings. So make sure to participate and here you have all the information you need.